Hello and welcome back to Armitage Candle Company. In today's episode, we're going to make a candle out of IGIR2322A wax, otherwise known as glass glow palm container wax. Don't let the powdery appearance fool you. This is a completely legal product to use to make candles. Step one is to fill our container with water. We'll convert this water weight of 214 grams into a wax weight using a specific gravity of 0.85. If you're curious about that math, check out this video or the links in the description. That gives us a total weight of 182 grams for one container. We're gonna use three containers, so 546 grams. I'm gonna use a fragrance load of 3% because that's all that palm can hold. So that's 531 grams of wax, which will weigh out here. We'll place the palm wax on the heat until it reaches 200 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where it's happiest. We're going to use two fragrance oils today, fruit slices and vanilla from Candle Wick. We're going to use a total fragrance load of 3% because that's all that palm wax can hold, proving that size doesn't always matter. At a 3% fragrance load, we're going to need 15 grams, which I split roughly half, 7 grams of one, 8 grams of the other using a non-porous glass container which can hold on to the fragrance without leaking or leaching or spilling until we're ready to add it to the wax. Three containers today which means I'm going to try three different wicks HTP93, CSN9, and CD16 which we need to label because I don't have a good enough memory to remember which wax was in which container and I'll use my trusty sharpie and painters tape to label each container in this test, we're going to use three different wicks series, which we will test in part two, but this is the build process and I need to make sure I know which is which. And the wick series I chose are HTP, CSN, and CD because these are generally considered okay for palm wax, but it all depends on your design. And we'll know if I made a good choice depending on the burn test in part two. Making sure to flip the wicks into the container from a distance will connect them to each using wick stickers and a metal straw. You can use any adhesion that you wish. You can even use the auto centering devices, but I tend to just use my eyeball and push that wick right into the center best I can. And I typically get pretty close. And if I don't, you can kind of peel the wick tab off the bottom. It's a little bit of a pain, but it's not impossible. We're going to use a reddish color from Candle Science today at a rate of five to six drops per pound. Since I have just over one pound, I'm going to use five drops. Now, palm wax has a melt point between 140 and 149 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to heat it past 200 degrees Fahrenheit before we even considering adding anything to it. Now, the thing about palm wax is that cooling it nice and slow will bring out the beautiful crystal formations it has. Unlike soy wax, where crystals are a detriment, Crystals are actually a feature of palm wax and they give it this beautiful feathery appearance inside of your containers. And so in order to slow down the cool after we add the wax to the container, we will wrap them in these aluminum jackets, which will hopefully give enough thermal insulation to slow down that cool as much as possible to allow the palm wax to form as large of crystals as possible. A slower cool typically results in larger crystal formation, which is exactly what palm wax looks and feels so good with. Now palm wax is a little bit different than soy wax and paraffin wax in that it really is a solid or a liquid. You won't find it in this in-between state so often, which is actually pretty unique not only when you're burning the candle, but when you're making the candle too. Because at the high melt point that it has, which is a lot higher than the average paraffin melt point of 135, a melt point of 140 to 149 means that this wax will try to harden very fast and we'll have to deal with it in a special way. When we've reached 200 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll take the wax off the heat and we're gonna add our fragrance oils. Double checking our temperature with an infrared, we're at exactly 201 degrees Fahrenheit. Taking all 15 grams of fragrance oil in our hands, we will pour it in at this ultra high temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit and take in a whiff of what I can only describe as a rappy song. Shout out to the 90s kids. We're going to add our color at five drops total, which give us a nice red hue to bring out those crystals. You can leave it uncolored if you wish, but if you add a little color, it accentuates the crystal formation. 
As with any good candle, after we add our fragrance oil and color, we will stir it for roughly one to two minutes. I'm gonna go for about a minute and a half here, but it makes sure that that fragrance oil disperses pretty evenly throughout the blend. Now that's important because as the candle cures and it cools and it becomes a solid state, that wax needs to trap that fragrance oil in the matrix because it doesn't chemically bind. This isn't a chemistry equation that you can just solve where you end up with some sort of candle compound on the right side of your equation. No, in fact, fragrance oil actually remains a liquid inside of the candle and the wax becomes a solid. So really, the fragrance oil and the color are dispersed. Now, the temperature of this did drop below 200 degrees where I wanted to pour, so I placed it back on the heat and watched it for a minute until it reached the pour temperature of 200 degrees. Double checking with an infrared and boom 200 degrees fahrenheit so we're ready to pour into our nice aluminum babies as we begin make sure not to go too ham on this pouring technique just go nice not too slow not too fast but get it all in there run it down the wick if you need to sometimes that helps if you get a little saturation there so spread it out evenly you don't need to top them off all right away the best way to get an even is technically to use a scale but in this case we're just going to put a little bit in each one until we're out and we have a clean pitcher member. Woo! So now that we have our wax in our containers, let's secure the wicks using a clothespin. You can use a formal wick centering device. You can even have these set up before you pour, but I typically like the freedom to pour around the container without having to navigate my way around a wooden minefield. So I add the clothespins at the conclusion of pouring the wax and we're going to let these sit for about 45 minutes until we get to the flip. Now remember that palm wax has such a high melt point that it wants to cool very fast. Now the problem is that the top of the candles will cool before the middle and often a lot of air will get trapped. And so about 45 minutes into these candles, we're going to literally flip them over. Now, why take on such a risky task, you might ask? Well, that trapped air, if left to its own devices, will sit right onto the surface and become a crater. By flipping these candles over before it actually hardens, we will send that air bubble all the way to the bottom so that it doesn't disturb our initial few burns. Now, palm wax does offer a variety of other techniques to deal with this air bubble conundrum, but this is the one we're covering in this video and perhaps in later episodes. I'll tackle a few others. Now make sure when you're doing this that you have an area that you're okay spilling wax in case it gets crazy. For these candles, it took about 45 minutes. The room temp was 67 degrees Fahrenheit, but your mileage may vary. Now I'm gonna leave the aluminum jacket on because these candles are still cooling and I wanna make sure that we can bring out the greatest these crystals have to offer. So removing the final clothespin, trimming the final wick, making sure to have sharp scissors, We'll flip the final one with great success and we will wait another five hours until these are substantially cooled. After about five hours or if you leave them overnight, it's time to undress them from their aluminum outfits. Revealing the beautiful crystal structure both on top and on the sides, you can see it looks kind of feathery. This is exactly what we were hoping for with palm wax and the red color looks pretty good to boot. Palm wax needs about a week to cure so we'll let them sit for a week before we burn test them in part two. Otherwise, if you found any of this entertaining, educational, or useful, please leave me a like or leave me a comment if you have any questions. Otherwise, I hope you have a great week. I hope you make beautiful candles and I will see you in the next episode.